Well, hello to everyone. I welcome you on behalf of TRT World Forum. TRT World Forum has been initiated two years ago in 2018, and we have had important discussions, including leaders, journalists, intellectuals from all around the world. Because of COVID-19, now we have introduced uh, digital debates uh, that will include, again, uh, main uh, thinkers, intellectuals, opinion makers from all over the world. Uh, this week, uh, we are going to discuss what has happened in Srebrenica. It's been 25 years since the horrible incidents took place uh, in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina, in Srebrenica. Today, we are going to host Dr. Wakar Azmi, he is OBE, and he is the chairman and the founder of Remembering Srebrenica. Uh, let me read out his uh, impressive bio. He is one of the, I think, best person to talk about what has happened in Srebrenica. He is the founder and chairman of Remembering Srebrenica, as I have said. His work and presence is pivotal to the charity, where alongside directing operations, he works tirelessly to maintain and expand its network of patrons, supporters, contacts, and volunteers. Uh, Dr. Azmi has been recognized nationally and internationally. He has been described as one of the world's most influential Muslims, and he was appointed as the EU ambassador for intercultural dialogue. I think he deserves commendation, a lot of uh, uh, supports as well. And parallel to this, he possesses a formidable understanding of the academic discourse surrounding the Srebrenica genocide. Uh, now, I would like to begin our discussion with Dr. Razmi with the following question. 25 years ago, can you please tell us, refresh our memories, what has happened in Srebrenica? Well, first of all, thank you very much for having me this evening. I am uh, delighted to uh, be part of this program. Um, what happened in July 1995, 25 years ago, was the mass murder of Muslims uh, in the town of Srebrenica um, by the forces of Maladic, who was the commander. Um, and when Maladic entered uh, Srebrenica uh, on 11th of July, he recorded a video, a message, um, which can be found on YouTube, where he said that today, on this holy day, uh, we give this town as a gift to our people, to the, the Serbian people, uh, and we have taken revenge against the Turks. And what he was saying really was uh, that we have taken revenge against those people um, who uh, converted to Islam, who became Muslim 500 years ago. Over um, 8,000 uh, Muslim men and boys were murdered. Uh, they were taken away to uh, different extermination camps um, and they were uh, executed and their bodies were uh, uh, sh sent away um, to mass graves um, and to this day the International Commission on Missing Persons uh, has been searching for bodies uh, from those mass graves and identifying using forensic evidence whose loved ones uh, these bodies belong uh, to the mothers, uh, the daughters who survived um, are still looking for their loved ones, their fathers, their husbands, their sons, uh, their brothers, uh, so that they can bury them uh, on 11th of July. Srebrenica was the, um, is a reminder, uh, a brutal reminder, reminder of man's inhumanity to man. It was the worst atrocity on European soil after the Holocaust. Um, and this was something that shook all of us um, across the world, particularly uh, the Muslim communities living in the United Kingdom, uh, because we had experienced 
racism, discrimination based on color, uh, based on uh, nationality, because we came to the United Kingdom as immigrants. And um, norm normally, uh, discrimination and racism is associated with immigration. With immigrants, it is associated with color, skin color or nationality. But to watch thousands of people murdered, to watch in our on our screens those people being put in concentration camps, uh, that women taken away and uh, put in rape camps was uh, so shocking and unbelievable that it continues to affect the three million Muslims in the United Kingdom to this day. Uh, it has left an um, uh, indelible mark on our conscience, um, as well as the conscience of, uh, uh, of humanity, that this was allowed to happen uh, the international community failed to protect uh, those people in Srebrenica uh, when it was their duty to protect um, Srebrenica being a safe area, um, that when the world had said never again after the Holocaust, uh, that this continued. And it happened in our, in our lifetime. And if this could happen uh, to those indigenous people uh, who are all white, of the same race, of the same color, um, then what is the future of minorities, uh, those visible minorities living in Europe, living in Britain, um, if we do not fight hatred, if we do not uh, fight racism uh, in our society? Um, so well, this I think, is. I will, I think, come to the lessons to be learned from what has happened in Srebrenica. Uh, as you have uh, rightly explained, there are many factors, but religion played an important role in the destruction of uh, uh, Muslims in this country, in that country. Actually, I visited uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina right after the Dayton Agreement, when the, uh, the dust a little bit cleared. And I have seen with my, with my own eyes the level of destruction. That, that is the physical uh, destruction. But also, as you have said, there is also a psychological uh, trauma and destruction, which will never be, uh, I think, uh, uh, let's say, put in, uh, in the right uh, direction. Because uh, still, uh, not only, I think, in Srebrenica, as you have said, in Britain, and also in uh, most of the Muslim countries, uh, these tragedies and horrors uh, have uh, not been forgotten. And that is a, an important reminder. This is the uh, main reason why TRT World Forum has uh, dedicated this week to the um, uh, anniversary of the uh, Srebrenica uh, genocide. Now, let me uh, ask you another question, because you have referred to the term genocide on a number of uh, times. Uh, uh, from an international law perspective, uh, uh, what has happened in Srebrenica, whether it has been recognized as a genocide or not, can you please just uh, tell us uh, the uh, terminological uh, discussions and debates and how it's been described? Because the main theme of our discussion is today is the enduring denial of genocide. Here, it seems that you described what happened in Srebrenica as a genocide, but there are some people who resist this kind of description and acceptance of uh, the reality on the ground. The term genocide um, is uh, a term that is taken very, very seriously and it must not be used lightly. Um, and the way uh, we, as well as the international community sees, and I hope uh, should see, uh, the term genocide is where a international court has um, has made a judgment uh, 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 of genocide, and in this case, two international courts uh, have called Srebrenica uh, a genocide, and therefore that is why the term genocide uh, is used. Um, if in the international courts had not called it a genocide, uh, then uh, people would be very cautious uh, in, uh, in, in using this term, but it is a, it is a judgment of uh, uh, both the International Court of Justice and the ICTY 
um, uh, that the what happened in Srebrenica was a genocide. Right. Uh, thank you very much for this clarification. Uh, and also, I think this term has uh, legal consequences as well. Uh, we have seen this during the trials, etc. Uh, Dr. Azmi, it seems that you have uh, dedicated, uh, you know, your time, your energy uh, to the issue of uh, uh, Srebrenica, to keep the memories alive and also to maybe bring some people to, the, uh, uh, to, to, to be held accountable. Uh, and you have set up an organization, a charity. Uh, it's called Remembering Srebrenica. What were the main motivations uh, behind the idea of establishing such a charity? And what ha have you done until now? What are the achievements uh, that you have uh, recorded so far? And also, I would ask, what are the main challenges that you still uh, need to address? Not only personally, of course, as a community, as an, uh, as an intellectual, uh, but uh, uh, at, uh, at large, uh, if you look at the Muslim uh, countries and Muslim states, uh, uh, I would like you to explore this question also from such a wide angle as well. Um, for, first of all, um, the, if we look at uh, the, uh, the, the, the situation uh, at the time uh, of the genocide, in Bosnia Herzegovina, um, people were uh, living uh, together side by side. Um, people, uh, you couldn't tell, you know, who was a Croat or a Serb or a Muslim. People of the same race, of the same culture, um, you know, sharing meals together, going to each other's homes, you know, to funerals and weddings. And yet, how quickly things changed and um, neighbors turned against neighbors and murdered people. I was giving a lecture and I was asked a question that if people um, couldn't differentiate um, who the Muslims were, who the Croats were, who the Serb or, Serbs were, then how did they know who to murder? And the answer to that, sadly, is that the neighbors knew who the Muslims were the teachers knew who the Muslims were. The local policemen knew who the Muslims were. And that is the shocking uh, aspect of this, is that teachers uh, whom we are taught to be role uh, to, to look them up as, uh, to see them as role models, neighbors whom we share our meals with, please that we look at protecting us, the very people that we have trust turned again simply because of the leaders in society like Milosevic and Karadic and Maladic who propagated um, the, um, the ideology of hate, who dehumanized so much so that normal people, ordinary people were co-opted to be murdered. And the, in, in places like Priador, the people had to be forced to, 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 to wear white armbands so they can be marked for extermination. So they, uh, people knew that these uh, were non-Serbs. Um, if this was the case in Bosnia-Herzegovina, if you look at the minorities living in Europe or in the UK, therefore, um, as visible minorities of different skin color, we are already marked out indefinitely for discrimination. Um, we already marked out uh, indefinitely for hatred. We don't need to wear white armbands. And the fact that if the same race can kill the other um, uh, group simply because of having a different faith, for being, dif having, uh, for being different ethnic group, what could happen to us? We look in our society now and across the world that hatred, discrimination uh, has not just creeped in, has always been there, but it is rising, rising across the world. And there are groups and individuals who are promoting uh, hatred, who are causing division, who are benefiting from the division, exploiting division, both at a corporate level as well as political level. And this is something which is quite worrying uh, trend right now that deeply worries everyone, every person um, uh, who 
um, you know, who has sense of justice, uh, who wants to see an equal world, a world where people respect each other. And that is why Remembering Srebrenica was established, firstly, to honor the victims, uh, or those who were murdered, uh, you know, those innocent victims who were murdered in the genocide. And secondly, to learn the lessons of Srebrenica, because for me, Srebrenica is the, uh, is the biggest antidote to the solutions uh, of the problems of the world. The world, the challenges that's facing the world, the Srebrenica is a solution, is an antidote, and we must learn from that. And the way Remembering Srebrenica Charity does it uh, is through three ways. Uh, firstly, we commemorate Srebrenica Memorial Day each year in the United Kingdom. And uh, you'll see that the whole nation in Britain comes together during Srebrenica Memorial Week from 5th of July to 12th of July. So this week, in one week, we will have 1,000 memorial events uh, commemorating Srebrenica in schools, in town halls, in cathedrals, in synagogues, in mosques. Uh, in community centers across the United Kingdom. So the whole nation comes together and it's so beautiful to see cathedrals flying the flag of Srebrenica or bridges are being lit up in the green and white colors of the Srebrenica flower or services being held in cathedrals, uh, ex you know, and a whole range of things. So this is something which is absolutely wonderful to see where communities are coming together to pay their respect remember the victims and learn the lesson uh, of Srebrenica in terms of where hatred can lead to. The second thing we do is we work with schools to teach school children uh, about the consequences of hatred. Uh, and so far we have uh, taught 100,000 children in the UK. And finally, the third thing we do is we take people, leaders, young people, teachers, uh, politicians to Srebrenica to bear witness to what happened there to talk to the mothers, to see um, the Potocari Memorial Complex where thousands of graves, white stones are, uh, you know, are, 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 exists. So for us, education is uh, the key uh, to tackling the growing hatred, uh, the growing discrimination, the racism that exists. And for us, remembering Srebrenica as an organization uh, is important to ensure that this education uh, prevails uh, everywhere. So what are the main challenges that you face, especially these days when there is a rising populism in many European countries, when there's a Brexit, where Brexiteers, especially during the campaign, they usually play the card of immigration. They are anti-immigrant, anti-minority. Uh, and also, uh, we have seen this in the uh, other side of the Atlantic as well. Uh, so what are the main challenges while you are doing and trying to educate uh, people? But also there is a rising, I think, uh, amount of uh, populism. Plus, as the EU agency, that is fundamental rights agency, they have uh, surveyed almost all EU countries. And unfortunately, as you have said, Muslims are being marked. Uh, so the future in that sense is not very optimistic. So these are the main challenges. So what are your um, views about these challenges first? Secondly, are you thinking of expanding your work to the Europe and also trying to maybe have some transnational connections with the Muslims outside Europe as well? Firstly, in the United Kingdom, um, the Remembering Sermisa UK is supported at the highest levels. And we're very lucky and fortunate to be in that position where this is, um, the support comes from the uh, opposition, leaders of all the opposition parties, as well as the government. And we're very fortunate uh, in that. So the Srebrenica Memorial Day, the national Srebrenica Memorial, in addition to the 1,000 local memorial events and activities that's happening in the United Kingdom. The National Sermisa Memorial Day will be taking place online this Saturday, 11th of July at 7 p.m. UK time, um, in which His Royal Highness Prince Charles will be speaking 
the uh, our Prime Minister Boris Johnson, who is speaking, as well as Angelina Jolie, uh, the uh, the actress, uh, will be speaking, um, as well as numerous other leaders. The leader of the opposition, uh, the Labour Party, uh, Keir Starmer, will be speaking. So we have the support at the highest levels, and this is something which we are very fortunate uh, to have. Where we are proud that Britain uh, is commemorating. Of course, there's always going to be uh, challenges in terms of, uh, and this is by no means um, just put, you know uh, 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 you know uh, something which is very uh, uh, particular to Britain, but across the world that you're all going to have forces uh, who, uh, who you know who will want to uh, put obstacles. But our job and our mission should be that we want to ensure a, an inclusive society, a society free from uh, hatred, uh, and we must stick to, those, to that mission. What really saddens me, however, is this, that the European Parliament passed a resolution unanimously in 2009 asking every member state to commemorate Srebrenica Memorial Day. And then in 2015, it passed another resolution asking every member state to develop educational programs to teach uh, young people, to teach children about this atrocity so that we can learn uh, the consequences of hatred. What really shocks me and saddens me is that... Um, not a single country in Europe commemorates Srebrenica Memorial Day nationally. Not a single country in Europe has developed educational programs to teach children. Why do you and think that is the case, Wakar Azmi, Dr. Azmi? Why do you think European states, European countries, where there is supposed to be celebration of diversity, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and democracy, protection of human rights, minorities, why do you think there is such a kind of... Uh, unwillingness to uh, commemorate what has happened in Srebrenica. And also, as you said, in the, the you know, Holocaust has entered in the curriculum in many countries, and that is something that's very positive. Why uh, the case of Srebrenica is not entering into the curriculum? I think two things. Um, you know, I like to think uh, that it is uh, complacency uh, uh, you know, from the part of uh, the institutions. Um, but, you know, it is something which uh, uh, saddens me where the international community, uh, and particularly in Europe, uh, uh, let those people down. Uh, the genocide was allowed to happen and people were murdered. But um, that complacency... Um, in terms of education, in terms of commemoration, should not exist, um, that Europe uh, must and should commemorate. I think the second thing is that we need to uh, uh, be more vocal um, in uh, as communities to ensure that uh, we hold uh, our governments uh, to account. Um, and therefore, we should establish initiatives to commemorate, to ensure that those politicians in power uh, do commemorate. It's something, it is also our responsibility. I would not like to think that, you know, the, 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 the situation where uh, people are consciously not choosing to commemorate, uh, I think that would be very horrifying and I would not want to entertain that idea. Um, but uh, I do believe uh, that Europe needs to be reminded of its promise to commemorate uh, through the 2009 resolution and through the 2015 resolution and the fact that people uh, should uh, commemorate and hold the politicians to account. But I think uh, we have covered a lot of things about what has happened and some of the initiatives, some of the issues regarding why we should remember and what lessons we should learn in order to avoid similar incidents in the future. Uh, now, I would like to uh, bring uh, one issue to the attention, that is uh, the denial of Serbizenica 
because as uh, both in the Balkan countries and also in Europe and maybe in the under the umbrella of UN, there is a, a denial of uh, uh, genocide when it comes to Srebrenica. You know, when you talk about Rwanda, when you talk about you know uh, uh, Holocaust, there is a genocide issue. There is a widely accepted view. And also now there is a, a case in Syria, almost half a million people you know, lost their life. Also people are talking about whether this is a genocide or not. Why do we think some people do reject the idea of genocide? And what are their main strategies in order to downplay the horrors uh, of the Srebrenica, where more than 8,000 people, this is the official figure, maybe it's more than that, lost their life under terrible conditions. You're right that this, the, the official figure in terms of Srebrenica within the space of five days where more than 8,000 people were murdered. But if you look at the ethnic cleansing that took place in other parts of Bosnia Herzegovina, in Priedo area, in Bratunat, in Kozarats, in uh, Visegrad, um, the, the figure comes to just uh, around under 100,000 people. 2.2 million people were displaced and just between 20 to 50,000 women raped uh, simply because they, who they were, as well as apart from the, uh, the uh, as you mentioned, uh, that genocide isn't just about uh, the killings, but also the killings of cultural heritage. So the mosques, uh, if you look at Imperial area, were all destroyed, as well as um, the historical uh, uh, libraries were destroyed. So um, there's cultural genocide as well as the physical killings uh, in order to exterminate the existence uh, of a particular faith group or, or, or race. Um, so in, in, in that sense, um, when you know, an ideology exists, and this is the, the, the definition of genocide, is that an ideology exists to exterminate the existence of a particular ethnic group, um, uh, uh, then that ideology and those people who follow that ideology would want to preserve it. And in uh, Bosnia Herzegovina, sadly, that ideology hasn't diminished. Um, you know, the project to create a greater Serbia, a pure uh, Serbia territory purified of uh, Muslims, purified of other groups, um, that project has not. Uh, uh, finished, and therefore um, people will do everything in their power to deny uh, the genocide uh, and, and to see what they've done uh, as um, uh, triumphalism, where uh, they want to glorify. And sadly, that will, that's what we see, uh, that in uh, and across Bosnia-Herzegovina, as well as in Serbia, there is a state-level denial of the genocide of uh, Srebrenica, as well as uh, glorification of the perpetrators, the architects of the genocide, glorifications of Milosevic, of Karadic, of Mladic, which is quite sickening to see that these evil people who carried out the genocide, murdered um, innocent people, murdered uh, young children, uh, that they are being glorified um, uh, you know, where songs uh, are basically written in praise of them, music is being played, uh, you know, where institution dormitories, university dormitories are being called under their name, um, and, you know, where people are doing all they can, all the efforts are being put in to ensure that there's revisionism uh, of the history by creating a commission uh, to look into denying the genocide, publishing reports, uh, as well as propagating uh, uh, the, the, the ongoing um, propaganda uh, that this was not a genocide, but this was simply a, a war uh, in which all sides uh, committed crimes. And this is what, how they want to, uh, to justify uh, their position. And that's something which is quite sickening to see. Well, what I understand is that there is also a propaganda war as far as the uh, crimes that, are, uh, that have been committed in uh, Srebrenica. And you have described some of those, I think, crimes, uh, war crimes, I would say. 
uh, killing innocent people and also destroying the cultural heritage. And also, I think one should talk about the demographic engineering. When you talk about the uh, displacement of people and the large amount of people who are being forced to leave their lands. And now uh, you have also explained the current sentiment. And also some people are trying to glorify those perpetrators. And that is a kind of a justification, I think, what has happened in the past. They see it as you know, something you know, natural, uh, in a sense. So under such circumstances, you have explained the past. And also the mood and sentiments uh, that are, uh, I think, currently held in, in, in that region of the world. What are the chances of uh, reconciliation in this context? Whether there are any chances, whether there has been or have been any efforts, any steps taken? Uh, can we a little bit talk about on the issue of reconciliation, uh, both in the past and the present, and the, of course the prospects for the future? I think, um, first of all, we need to understand the obstacles to reconciliation. Um, and, and that is that if there, is, uh, there are uh, groups of people whose whole um, uh, project has been um, to create uh, a, a, a territory purified of uh, different groups, uh, then unless that ideology is defeated, uh, reconciliation is not going to be possible. And that ideology is alive and kicking. Um, that's the first thing. And I think the second thing in terms of the obstacle to reconciliation is uh, the uh, Dayton Peace Agreement, um, which both ended the war, um, but that uh, it divided the country into uh, ethnic communities. Um, and therefore, it did not provide any means uh, for political representation uh, outside, outside of ethnicity. This means that there are irresistible uh, incentives for politicians who have a particular project in mind to seek power by relying on the most uh, maximal and, uh, and exclusive ethnic claims uh, and to exploit um, the, the whole um, ideology that was used uh, during the genocide ethnic cleansing to keep people divided because uh, you know it, it benefits them uh, I, you know and unless those two factors remain uh, reconciliation uh, is going to be impossible uh, what you have said reminds me, reminds me actually of the case of uh, Lebanon where we have seen this sectarian divisions rather than ethnic divisions. Uh, there is a similar issue in uh, Lebanon where communities are this, you know, uh, described and grouped under the umbrella of sectarian identities. And it is very difficult to have some kind of common, let's say, uh, future or identity. There is a similar case in uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina or let's say in former Yugoslavia where the communities are divided on, I think, uh, ethnic lines. So it will be very difficult to have the idea of an inclusive citizenship. Unless there is an inclusive citizenship, I guess, it will be very difficult to have a, a common future or some common objectives where that reconciliation can be based upon because reconciliation should have some kind of grounds on which it might be you know, supported or consolidated, uh, etc. Here, uh, there is a special, uh, I think, uh, specific question uh, regarding reconciliation. Uh, you have said the Dayton Agreement, uh, the, the basis of Dayton Agreement, I think, uh, makes an impact. But also, uh, Republika Srpska continues uh, to call for uh, secession uh, still uh, in, in, the, in, the, in that region. How do you think that will uh, influence uh, reconciliation? Because as long as there are some demands for uh, secession, for an independent, let's say, political uh, uh, body, this will make it uh, quite hard for, for reconciliation. Yes, the Republic of Serbska entity um, uh, it was, um, uh, I mean, came about um, uh, th through the whole project uh, of Greater Serbia, a, a territory, um, uh, you know, uh, that is uh, purely for Serbs. 
therefore, in terms of Republic Srpska, um, uh, in the, uh, threatens regularly um, in terms of you know calls for independence and having referendums. Um, but that is something that, if the as I said before, if the ideology exists, um, uh, then uh, that kind of um, uh, uh, those kind of actions will continue uh, to happen regularly. And this is where it is absolutely important um, uh, that the uh, that Europe takes um, uh, action uh, against those people who are. Um, uh, not just denying the genocide, uh, but glorifying uh, the perpetrators, uh, and therefore by doing so, sustaining the ideology and sustaining the whole project uh, that caused the genocide, um, as opposed to uh, moving forward uh, to create a society where different ethnic groups can live side by side, um, can... Uh, you know, can actually progress their lives economically, uh, 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 you know, uh, educationally in every way um, uh, 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 through uh, respect and tolerance. Um, and if there are groups of people who do not want that, who do not want a, if I was to use the term multi-ethnic Bosnia-Herzegovina, just to explain my point, uh, if there are a group of people who are opposed to that, who opposed to the democratic principles uh, of equality, of um, you know universal shared values, of humanity, of human rights, uh, then uh, sanction must be placed upon those people, uh, and the EU High Representative does have the power to do that, uh, and those powers must be used. Um, otherwise, we are leaving Bosnia Herzegovina. Uh, which is a beautiful country, a country uh, which is so gracious in every sense, a country that has a glorious, glorious um, uh, history in the, con in the sense of the contribution that is made uh, to civilization, to Europe, that we're leaving such a beautiful country um, in, uh, on, on, on a path of self-destruction, on a path of not progress, uh, but going backwards, which is uh, something you know that would be very dangerous. Thank you very much. I was going to ask you actually, what steps should be taken to ensure reconciliation? You partly addressed that question, but this uh, address was something to do with the EU. European leaders, European states should not allow the glorification, and there should be some kind of sanctions uh, uh, on those people who either glorify this kind of ideology which would uh, prevent reconciliation. And reconciliation is actually, from a sociological point of view, is needed in this place. Yes, people do have memories, people do have you know, horrible, I think, uh, uh, dreams still. Uh, but I think uh, we cannot continue as such. Uh, as far as I know, you are also supporting reconciliation between the communities as well. Uh, so one, I think, way of uh, doing this is the intervention of the states who can mediate, who can uh, bridge the gap, let's say, between the communities. But what are the other uh, steps that should be taken? Steps by the communities, steps by the international organizations, charities, and also steps by the Muslim countries all around the world. We are talking about 57 uh, members of the Organization of Islamic uh, Countries. Uh, we should not, we did not discuss it so far, their impact, but I think they should have some also responsibility to address that question and maybe to shoulder some responsibility in reconciliation. I think if we look at, at the um, micro level in terms of uh, relationship between communities, um, whoever visits uh, Bosnia Herzegovina will see whether it's Sarajevo or some of the other parts of Bosnia Herzegovina that people um, are getting on and people want to get on. A very good example uh, is when the massive um, uh, uh, floods took place when you know during that period, um, you had Serbs, you had Croats, you had Muslims 
working together to to um, uh, support each other. And this was so beautiful to see. Um, it shows that people uh, at the local level, people who are ordinary people, um, are getting on, want to get on. But a macro level, when the those who um, have a particular agendas, those who um, want to continue with a particular ideology, um, they are uh, continue to not just propagate the ideology, um, to brainwash people um, and co-opt people in the ideology, but they want to maintain the division and sustain the divisions because they see uh, that this will be um, uh, a benefit to them in terms of achieving their overall goal. And this is where I believe uh, that the international community, as well as the EU high representative, as well as other countries um, should pay attention because it is um, you know, from Sarajevo, uh, where the First World War erupted, um, the country uh, of Bosnia-Herzegovina is uh, strategically placed, and there are groups uh, that want to um, uh, interfere uh, in the domestic politics uh, of Bosnia-Herzegovina, and we need to ensure uh, that um, that those forces are not allowed to destabilize the country, but uh, that the country has an opportunity uh, to progress uh, with all um, ethnic groups, all communities uh, being treated equally and fairly and moving forward um, uh, where, uh, in a way where they feel that they can make equal contributions uh, and they can be respected. I believe that uh, that that is not happen in terms of the sustained efforts by the international community or other stakeholders in the way that it should happen. Dayton Agreement gives a gives a lot of powers uh, to um, uh, to those not just the signatories of the Dayton Peace Agreement but also to the EU high representatives. And I think those powers should be used for the benefit um, of uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina and its people. Well, thank you very much. We have got some questions coming from the audience. I will read out one of them to you, actually. That is, regarding the complicated system of government in Bosnia-Herzegovina, what are the main obstacles in institutional development of initiatives for commemoration? Well, first of all, um, the... Uh, the commemoration that takes place um, in Srebrenica itself, um, in the Srebrenica uh, uh, memorial uh, complex uh, itself that happens on 11th of July each year, that particular uh, piece of land uh, was, uh, you know, was, was supported by the previous EU high representative, uh, uh, Lord Paddy Ashton, the late, late Lord Paddy Ashton, with the EU High Representative for Bosnia Herzegovina, and that has ensured that those mothers uh, who are grieving uh, and and looking for their loved ones, and once the bodies are found from uh, you know from those graves, they're able to bury them and they're able to pay respect uh, at those graves. Um, so, 11th of July each year commemorations does take place. However, when it comes to commemorations. Uh, in other parts of Bosnia and Herzegovina, particularly the territory of Republika Srpska, um, there are some issues and problems. If you look at in terms of Priador area, where I visited last year, the Omaska concentration camp, um, uh, which is a, a huge um, uh, factory that is owned by uh, the Mittal uh, company, um, who uh, the, the survivors face huge problems obstacles in commemorating there. Uh, they want to have a, a memorial uh, and they're not allowed to have. And this is where the Mittal company can actually um, in, you know, ensure that the memorial is established, but uh, th that so far they have not uh, allowed. As well as in other places, uh, in uh, uh, Trinopoli or other concentration camps where people uh, do face, and I've experienced that having visited last year and participated in those memorial do face harassment and abuse, uh, you know, from the Serbs. 
Uh, and it is very, very shocking uh, that people who want to remember their dead, people who want to remember those who are murdered uh, are, 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 and want to grieve uh, cannot do so uh, in, 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 in a manner, you know, or visit the places that they, um, you know, they, that they feel uh, that they want to uh, do a prayer or reflect uh, uh, on the atrocities that they're not allowed to and they're stopped. And this is something uh, which is quite, um, quite painful to see. Painful for someone like me, but imagine the pain that the survivors go through. Imagine the pain uh, that the families go through, uh, you know, and, and this is something which, again, uh, you know, the, 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 not just the institutions of Bosnia Herzegovina and the leaders, but also the international community should make it absolutely clear uh, that the, this was a genocide, uh, you know, this was an ideology uh, that led to genocide, an evil ideology that led to a genocide, and therefore, uh, those people, first of all, who deny uh, uh, and, and those who uh, continue to glorify uh, must be prosecuted, must not be allowed to deny and must not stop uh, people from commemorating and remembering uh, those innocent people who were murdered. Well, there is one more question to you. Uh, it seems that you are a you know, regular visitor to the area and you are also maybe talking to many survivors or relatives of survivors uh, in Bosnia-Herzegovina. Um, and we talked about the role of religion uh, in terms of motivating some people uh, and also maybe pushing some people and also, uh, you know, some of the religious leaders at the time also played a role, actually. They have some responsibility from the Christian side. Now, our viewer is asking, what are the perceptions of Muslims, as far as Christians are concerned, after 25 years, how do Muslims look at their Christian neighbors or Christian, let's say, friends in the country? Because we have seen that, you know, uh, they were the victims of uh, uh, neighbors who were supposed to be believers in Christianity or uh, in, in at, at least uh, in, in this region, uh, uh, religion was a major player in the beginning of the war and uh, later on as well. What is the perception of Muslims now? How they view, how they look at their Christian uh, neighbors uh, or uh, friends, uh, etc.? Firstly, the Muslim, um, uh, and you mentioned that I am a regular visitor to uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina uh, and I meet uh, mothers regularly, mothers who lost their husbands uh, their brothers, you know, their sons, um, that I meet them. And I'll, um, I want to quote a mother uh, who said to me uh, that they don't have any hatred despite the fact that they went through genocide. Um, and, you know, because they see hatred as weakness and they refuse to be weak. This was something which was very powerful for me. Um, the fact that genocide has happened and yet the mothers, uh, they do not carry hatred. Uh, and what she said was, this is what they, her faith teaches her. And as a result right. of that, as a result of the, uh, the, the values of the mothers, the values of the survivors, um, uh, there hasn't been a single revenge attack in the 25 years since the genocide across the whole of Bosnia-Herzegovina. That shows something. That is something which is, for me, going in and seeing that, it's really moving, that the mothers and those who suffered, um, despite the fact that they suffered um, uh, from the inhumane actions of evil people, they carry humanity that they're symbols of humanity. And you cannot not uh, leave uh, Bosnia-Herzegovina but feel that the, 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 passion, the compassion and empathy uh, that people have, uh, which is given by their faith. Um, and this is absolutely remarkable. 
in terms of the uh, groups uh, uh, who are looking uh, at the Muslim uh, communities, um, that is before us. Uh, we see uh, the glorification uh, of not just those who carried out the genocide, uh, uh, we see uh, the denial of the genocide. And what that means is that there are people who are continuing to promote hatred uh, against uh, uh, Muslim communities, continue to promote, dehumanize them, continue to see them as somewhat inferior, as somewhat that they shouldn't belong uh, in this country, that this should be their ter territory only, uh, that they haven't finished the job. Um, and that is something which is deeply worrying because it is happening at state level. It is happening at, uh, you know, at leadership level um, and it is happening at institution level. Um, not just that, but there's also the fact that you can use uh, uh, taxpayers' money uh, to fund uh, research groups uh, to deny the genocide. Uh, to dehumanize people, uh, uh, as well as uh, to orchestrate things uh, that will make uh, the the very people who suffered from the genocide make them feel um, uh, 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 as bad and, and evil people. For example, um, the, the 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 president, uh, the, the former president of uh, of Croatia, um, uh, and this is something which is quite. Uh, was publicized, uh, uh, was on record of saying that the Muslims in Bosnia and Herzegovina are extremists uh, to that effect, etc. I mean, to you know, the, the, the most gracious people, the people who suffered genocide and there hasn't been a revenge attack uh, by those people against the Serbs, the people who have, uh, you know, who have been fighting for a multi-ethnic Bosnia, uh, the people who want to live uh, with uh, Bosnia has to govern the way it used to be with different faith groups uh, or people of all faiths and no faith uh, living together uh, in, in, in peace and harmony, that those people are being labeled as extremists is something which uh, just goes to show that the, you know, the, the, the evil minds uh, of the people um, uh, around uh, that country, around the Balkans and uh, inside the country. Well, thank you very much. Actually, Islam in the Balkans has never been radical or extremist, especially in the Balkans. Yes, maybe in some other Muslim countries we have seen some trends to that extent, but especially when you look at the Balkan countries, Islam has been living with many ethnicities, many religions and sectarian groups. I think it was an example of multiculturalism and multi-religious uh, you know, communities. Oh, absolutely. Well, I mean, I, yeah. I, I want to quote um, um, uh, Yaku Finzi, uh, who is uh, um, a, a wonderful, wonderful man, a man of wisdom. Um, and he's the leader of the Jewish community uh, in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And Yaku Finzi uh, said to me that uh, the Jewish community, when they were expelled from Spain, uh, were given refuge in Bosnia and Herzegovina. And since then to this day, there hasn't been a single case of anti-Semitism in Bosnia and Herzegovina, that there hasn't been a single case of hatred or discrimination. So this is something what you have said, Professor Talib, that um, you know, when you talk about the multicultural Bosnia, a Bosnia where people respected each other and respect each other, that beautiful culture and those beautiful values, this is what Bosnia Herzegovina is and something that uh, other parts of the world can learn from. Well, thank you very much for joining us today, Dr. Wakarazmi. So we have uh, had a very fruitful discussion on the on remembering Srebrenica. Thank you very much indeed. And TRT World Forum will continue to discuss what has happened in Srebrenica all this week and uh, thank you very much for joining us and i also would like to thank our audience on behalf of trt world forum and today uh, we have finished our debate uh, digital debate uh, tomorrow we will continue our debate at the same time and see you tomorrow thank you thank you